I want to stay with that same theme. Now, this is another story, but related, as you will find out. There are hundreds of people who are killed or injured by the police in the United States each year. You were hearing a little from Patrick there, just how much has changed over the past few years in, in the reporting of it. Well, much of the media attention has been on the race of the victims, but there is another pattern emerging. That is a large number of the dead or of the injured have disabilities. Those with mental illness or physical impairments or learning dif dif uh, difficulties uh, have difficulty communicating with the authorities and the situations have sometimes escalated quickly. Ali Makbul reports. A huge number of people injured and those killed by the police in the U.S. each year have a disability. 26-year-old Ethan Saylor, who had Down syndrome, idolized police officers. He'd even wanted to be one. One evening, he'd been at the cinema with a carer, but at the end of the film, he went back to his seat, wanting to see the movie again. Hearing someone was inside the next screening without a ticket, three off-duty police officers went in. Somehow in those next uh, seconds or minutes, Ethan um, ends up on the floor, face down, uh, and is not breathing. Ethan was restrained, handcuffed, and had been crying out before he died. We were called to the sheriff's department. The autopsy report was back. And they told us that the medical examiner had ruled this a homicide and the death was caused by asphyxiation. The department whose officers were involved in Ethan's death has not engaged with Patty. They agreed a financial settlement with her, but never so much as apologized or admitted any wrongdoing. Already this year, Right across the US, at least 130 people with a range of disabilities are confirmed to have been killed by police officers. These are just the ones we know about. In hundreds more cases, it was never determined whether the person killed had a disability at all. But what of the officers who have taken the life of someone with a disability? I had a subject who was armed with a knife outside of school and um, um, I was forced into a situation where I didn't have any other choice uh, but to, to shoot and kill the individual. And we were outside of school. She was armed with a very large knife. She wasn't responding to my instructions. Um, after uh, the incident was over, uh, I was able to, to be told that she had a history of mental illness. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't understand what was going on at the time. But so so I had you to said at the, the, issue. At the time you, you, you felt you had no choice. Do you, do you feel differently about that event now? No. I don't feel differently about it now. The complaint from many around the country is that officers too often command and control, shouting orders and physically taking charge, especially when someone doesn't immediately comply. The problem is some people just can't comply. There are few hopes of the major shift in police culture which many feel could save the lives of people with disabilities, where de-escalating situations really is the focus with even fewer expectations that mental health provision will radically improve here, the grim numbers will continue to grow across this country.